We're only a couple days until the election. Election fever's in the air. We don't know who Chris is voting for yet. But, you know, some people are saying, I don't know if this is true or not, Courtney, you and I were talking about this, but because yields are going up, Bitcoin's going up, that maybe the market's pricing in a Trump election victory. I don't know if that's true. I'm not sure I buy it, but what do you think? Yeah, and I think there is an argument to be made that that's happening. Um, a lot of analysts will point out to the fact that Bitcoin is doing really well because Trump has come out and he's been very pro-Bitcoin. So people are saying, oh, the reason that's going up is because the markets assume that Trump is going to win the election. But then on the flip side, like you and I were talking about, maybe this is just kind of a risk on where people are willing to take more risk in the markets right now and throwing more money at something like a Bitcoin, assuming that the economy is going to continue to do well. Well, you know, it's hard to predict. Uh, I mean, you look at um, the last administration that uh, when Trump was president and everybody thought, wow, energy stocks are going to go through the roof. Well, the opposite happened, right? Energy had its worth four years, um, you know, than, than the previous four years. And then Joe Biden's administration comes in and it's like, oh, energy is really going to get punished now because he's so anti uh, energy and anti fracking. And energy had one of the best four years it's ever had. So, you know, even if you predict the outcome of an election, it doesn't mean that the uh, markets are going to see it the same way you do. And let's face it, guys, the market loves divided government. So it doesn't have confidence in anybody. And at this point, it's like a coin flip, like, all right, well, if there's a Democratic sweep, this will happen. If it's a Republican sweep, this will happen. <laughs> They're not even sure if there's going to be a sweep or who's going to win what. Uh, it's all going to come down to the day after. And I guarantee what's going to happen the day after, guys. We're all going to start worrying about the next election. You know what, Bob? You know, true words have been spoken. But I do think the bond market has already voted. Um, you know, we've seen Treasury yields go up a lot since, ironically, since the Fed started cutting rates in September up to like 4.3 percent on the 10-year Treasury and that says to me, whoever gets in office, deficit spending is going to continue because these politicians can't help themselves. So, you know, one thing we've talked about a lot on the show is just that I see more inflation in the future. That's what my, uh, my, that's what my crystal ball is telling me. Yeah, because I've been watching the campaign ads, right? I thought that the inflation was from corporate greed. <laughs> now, now you're talking about <laughs> government spending. When did that happen? <laughs> I missed those trillions upon trillions of dollars that the uh, Trump and Biden administration spent over the last couple of years to cause inflation. Um, but I think that's the, the bigger issue here. I don't know if the market's telling you it's going to be one candidate or the other. But I think it's pretty confident to say that there's no reeling in of uh, of government spending coming anytime soon. And I think this is just a reminder, like not to change your investments based on the election. And I'm hearing a lot of that right now where not necessarily people are investing one way or another, but nobody wants to make a decision on anything until after the election. This happens in the stock markets right now. People don't want to buy houses until after the election. Like everyone just saying, let's wait and see what's going to happen. But realistically, we're just at least going to know who's going to be in office. It doesn't matter who it is. But then we know what the next four years will be. And then all that certainty comes back in. So I don't think you should delay these conversations. It tends to be a good thing either way, just once we get past that date. Well, I don't know, Court. I just read that uh, Apple stopped making any iPhones until after the election. <laughs> NVIDIA is not selling any GPUs. Um, they're not pumping any gas at the uh, Phillips station right now because they got to wait until the election happens. I mean, it's... It's really kind of silly, right? You know, commerce continues no matter what's happening. And, and, you know, a lot of folks, well, I guess they just need another excuse to procrastinate. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I missed that news article when they said they're going to cut every dividend in our portfolio. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's a good point. It's like, you know, if you're like sitting in cash right now, you know, those yields, you know, they're not going to stay forever. Um, and if we're going to see inflation, I mean, the best possible place to overcome that's the stock market. No, that's a great point. If you sat in bonds, you sat in cash last couple of years, inflation ate your lunch. Let's be real about it. Um, but I think it also, you know, think about the all weather portfolio. I mean, we don't really know what's going to happen. We can't anticipate because whatever we think may happen, depending on who gets in office, typically doesn't happen. So just by owning everything and being prepared, I think is always the best strategy. And that's why you don't want to sell on your laurels now, because once you have certainty, markets are already going to move and you're going to be like, man, I wish I had my money there. So have it there ahead of time um, and have it diversified ahead of time. And I think that's the mistake most investors make right now. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get the feeling, Ryan, you're going to sit on your laurels, you know, <laughs> being 100 percent in video when it's sitting at an all time record high. I mean, you told us <laughs> I'm the rich brother. We all know that. <laughs> well, you know, not to not to um, use the wrong adjective here, but you know what Trump's elections is a resilient economy. I mean, we've had an economy that has been going gangbusters in spite of, you know, higher interest rates, right? Jobless claims continue to drop. Durable good orders were big 
uh, last week. And now GDP is expected, you know, to come in at three, three and a quarter percent. You know, over the last six quarters, we've had a GDP that's grown at three percent. So, you know, in stocks are slaves of earnings power, right? They, you know, they're, they're, they need earnings go up, prices go up. That's what P.E. ratios are about. Uh, so I think at this point, you know, we've been in a big booming bull market. We just had a two year birthday of the of the bull market. Um, I think uh, anybody who's guessing it's over is is going to be a little bit premature. Yeah, and that's a great point too. Don't wait for the election because the fundamentals are just so good right now, right? Like you said, we're having economic growth accelerate, which is a positive. Uh, we're seeing wage growth go up over inflation now. Inflation in the short term is moderated, even though we may have longer term inflation. Uh, corporate profits, we know are accelerating into next year. This is kind of like, it doesn't really get better than this. Uh, in terms of economic conditions, even though it feels a little bit like with inflation being so high for people. Um, you know, besides that, like I can't think of a better scenario to get your money to work. Meanwhile, many of us still want to wait. Yeah, I'm actually looking for a guarantee, <laughs> right? I don't know. He keeps spelling out this economic nirvana. So uh, I hope he's right. But, you know, a lot of this is based on AI, right? AI is going to increase productivity across the board, uh, which we kind of believe that's that's what's going to happen. And, you know, that, which is great because, you know, it's not all about technology stocks now because every company is a technology company. And I think we're going to see enhancements in productivity. You now, we can't even imagine or fathom at this point. So it's, it's you know, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's good to be it's good to be in the, in the position to vote this week. Um, I hope your vote matters, but it's even a better position, you know, to be in the greatest country in the world where the GDP is climbing every single quarter. And the stock market's making new highs in spite of the valuations. Yeah. So, Bob, rumor has it you're going to vote early because you're an upstanding citizen. Well, you know, Rye, I've always been a trend follower and there's 46 million votes have been casted. I don't want to be left out. So um, as soon as I get off this podcast, I'm going online to find out where my local voting site is. Well, I guess the big the big question is, is not who's going to get elected. It's whether Ryan's going to vote or not. Oh, I'm voting this year for sure. I'm voting this year for sure. And the only thing I know is Bob Quinn's going to go higher after the election. That's my one prediction. You heard it here first. <laughs> well, you know, there are a few guarantees, uh, death, taxes, and Bob Quinn. <laughs> and Bob, we trust. <laughs>